congratulations on the purchase of your chemical injection system. Here is how the system works. When water to the home is turned on, the flow switch, which is the first part of the system, will recognize the water flow. It will then trigger the pump to begin running to pull solution from the solution tank. When the water flow to the house stops, the pump will stop as well. This video will walk you through the installation process. The system will consist of the following parts. A solution pump, the solution tank, the flow switch, a chem activator, a weighted suction line strainer, an injection fitting, three connecting nuts, and three ferrules. The system will also contain replacement parts. The pump tube on the pump will need to be replaced periodically. There is an additional video available should you need to perform that step. The system is compatible with PVC, copper, and PEX tubing. This video will feature an installation using PVC. When working with PVC, please remember that primer and cement will be required to secure all connections. A suggestion for DIYers is to cut and fit all the plumbing first and then apply the primer and cement afterwards. Another reminder before tapping into your water line is that the water main to the home needs to be shut off first. It's also necessary to identify the water flow. As a recommendation, a spin down filter is suggested for the system. A model can be found on the Springwell website. A spin down filter is beneficial because it'll eliminate any debris or sediment that could prevent the flow switch from operating properly. There is a troubleshooting portion towards the end of this video that discusses this part. A shutoff valve ahead of the system is also recommended. This will assist with system maintenance. Another important call out is that the flow switch needs to be installed with the wire coming out from the top. This will ensure that the spring on the valve works correctly. In this example, the plumbing loop will be built upwards. A shutoff valve is being featured in this installation. Therefore, we're starting with a threaded connector. A 90 degree elbow is being installed on the other side. When working with PVC fixtures, be sure to use plumbing tape to ensure that there are no leaks. The shutoff valve is being installed ahead of the chem injection system. This will allow for easy system maintenance if needed. A one inch thread to slip adapter is then prepared and installed on the other end of the shutoff valve. Another piece of PVC can then be added. The first component from the system that will be installed will be the flow switch. It is clearly marked with the inlet and the outlet side. When connecting it to the system, the water that's flowing from the source will run through the inlet and out of the outlet. For shipping purposes, you'll find a red cap that's inside both of the connections. Go ahead and remove those. They can be discarded. For maintenance reasons, you'll find a small tab that's hanging out from the top of the flow switch. We'll talk about this in a later step. Also note that the flow switch has one inch PVC slip connections. The flow switch can now be installed on the other end of the shutoff valve, the outlet facing towards the other side of the pre-plumb. Another small length of PVC can then be added into the outlet. There is a cord leading out from the bottom of the flow switch that leads to the switch box. The amount of wire leading out from the box gives much flexibility when it comes to the installation. The pump will eventually be connected to this outlet. For the purpose of this video, we will be positioning the switch box near the power supply. Once the shutoff valve and flow switch have been installed, your system should look similar to this. The next component to be installed is the chem activator. It has an opening that's designed to receive the injection fitting. During installation, this opening will be positioned on the incoming water supply. Since our setup is different, you will need to flip the cam activator the other way to have it align properly. The cam activator has one inch threads on either side. Because of the precision cut of the threads, Teflon tape cannot be used. Instead, you will need to use pipe dope. One inch thread to slip PVC connectors are being used in this example. Since Teflon tape is not compatible with the cam injector, pipe dope will need to be applied to the threads. 
the thread to slip connector can then be threaded into one end of the cam injector. Be sure that it's fully tightened. Repeat these steps for the opposite end of the cam injector. Since the water flow at this installation flows from the left, we will need to flip the cam injector so that the injection fitting is on the same side as the water flow. With the cam injector correctly oriented, go ahead and slip it onto the connection of the incoming water supply. In this situation, the pump will be mounted beneath the cam injector. Therefore, the cam injector can be turned upside down. Measure a length of PVC to align with the inflowing water supply and slip it onto the other end of the cam injector. A elbow is then added to point towards the inflowing side of the preplumb. This is followed by a final piece of PVC to close the loop. Your installation should look similar to this and is ready to be primed and glued. Also note that wire management is being used during this installation. The next component to be installed is the solution pump. Turn it over to access the bracket that's on the back side. It's the square plate that's found on the back of the pump. Push it downwards to slide it off. If you look closely at the plate, you'll notice a stopper inside of the track. That stopper can be used to identify the bottom of the mounting bracket. Identify a mounting position near the chem activator and a power supply. You will also want to mount the pump to a stud because of its weight. It is recommended to use a level when marking out your mounting area. This will ensure that the pump is straight. Once aligned, go ahead and mark the position and the screw holes. Pre-drill the holes for the mounting bracket. Because of the large variation of surfaces, hardware is not provided for mounting the bracket. Since the surface in this scenario is wood, quarter-inch lag bolts and washers are being used. Before mounting the bracket, identify the stopper to verify the bottom of the plate. In this scenario, the sticker was placed upside down. The bracket could then be positioned where you marked and aligned with the holes that you pre-drilled. The quarter-inch lag bolts will then be tightened using a ratchet. You are now ready to slide the pump onto the bracket. The pump will align with the tracks that are on the mounting bracket. Once aligned, go ahead and slide it down and lock it in place. The plug leading out from the pump will now be plugged into the flow switch power box. After this step, your system should look similar to this. There's a warning label wrapped around the latch on the bottom of the pump. Release the latch to remove the label. It's a reminder that the roller assembly must be fully extended. The latch can then be resecured. The next component to be installed will be the injection fitting. The nozzle on the fitting will require a 45 degree cut before it's installed. A utility knife can be used to perform this step. Catch the blade at the top of the nozzle and then work it down at a 45 degree angle to complete the cut. Plumber's tape will now need to be applied to the threads on the center of the injection fitting. The injection fitting will now be threaded into the cam activator. Be sure that it's fully tightened. You are now ready to install the solution tank. This step will require the suction discharge tubing. Using a quarter inch drill bit, you will need to drill a hole in the cap of the tank. When drilling the hole, it's recommended to drill offset. This will be helpful later on when you're filling the tank with solution. Go ahead and unscrew the lid. Thread the tubing through the quarter inch hole that you drilled. You want to insert about three feet. Locate the weighted suction line strainer. Press the end of the line that you fed through the cap into the strainer. Push it all the way in until it stops. The strainer will go inside the tank, but it must be three inches from the bottom. To solve this, insert a measuring tape into the tank. The top will measure at 33 inches. You will then use a the measuring tape to measure from the bottom of the strainer up the line you will want to identify the 30 inch mark on the line. Adjust the tubing in the cap so that the 30 inches are hanging out from the bottom. 
Placing a small zip tie on the other side of the cap is a useful way to prevent the line from falling in any further. The weighted strainer can then be lowered into the tank and the lid set in place temporarily. The other end of the line will need to be trimmed. This is the line leading out from the other end of the cap. It will be connected to the connections on the bottom of the pump, but be sure to leave some additional slack. You will now need one connecting nut and one ferrule. The connecting nuts looks like a small cap with an opening, and the ferrule is a small plastic piece. Slide the connecting nut over the line from the tank with the threads facing outwards, and then slide a ferrule over the line. Be sure the ferrule is positioned as shown here. Before attaching the line, you will need to identify the inlet and outlet on the bottom of the pump. If you look closely on the bottom of the pump, you'll notice two arrows. The arrow that's pointing in towards the pump is the inlet. The arrow that's pointing out and away from the pump is the outlet. Insert the tube leading out from the solution tank into the inlet. Push the tube all the way in until it stops. Slide the ferrule forward so that it's flush with the connector, and then slide the connecting nut over the ferrule and fully tighten it. Do note that Teflon tape is not required for these connections. Your system should look similar to this after performing that step. The remaining tubing will be used to connect the cam injector. Like before, slide a connecting nut over the tube with the threads facing outwards. You will then place a ferrule on the end of the line. Ensure it's positioned as shown here. Push the tube all the way into the connection until it stops. Slide the ferrule up against the connector and then slide the connecting nut over and fully tighten it. Guide the other end of the tubing towards the injection fitting that's installed on the cam activator. Go ahead and trim away the extra. Once again, a connecting nut will be slid over the tubing, followed by a ferrule, and again, ensure that the positioning is correct. Insert the tubing into the injection fitting until it stops. Slide the ferrule into position, and then secure it using the connecting nut. Here's what the connection should look like once it's completed. At this point, the flow switch can be plugged into power. This is what your system should look like after these steps have been completed. At this point, all the connections have been made. You are now ready to mix the bleach solution. Go ahead and remove the lid to the solution tank. Begin by adding one gallon of bleach to the solution tank. The first time that you fill the solution tank with water, you will need to use drinking water. Go ahead and add 34 gallons of drinking water. After this point, your well water will be treated and using regular tap water will be acceptable. The cap to the solution tank can now be replaced. The solution tank will need to be refilled when it gets below 5 gallons. Prior to priming the system for use, we will need to check the rollers on the solution pump to make sure that they're properly extended. They are visible by looking beneath the pump. In this scenario, the rollers are fully extended, so no additional action will be required. If the rollers on your pump are already extended, please jump ahead to 1505. If instead the rollers are retracted, it would need to be corrected. When the rollers are retracted, you will notice that they are not applying any pressure to the pump tube. One of the additional latches that was sent with the pump will be required. It will be inserted into the opening that's on the top of the pump. This will prevent the motor from turning. The latches at the bottom of the solution pump will need to be released. The cap at the bottom of the solution pump will then be removed. The indentions on the cap will align with the screws of the rollers. While securing the latch, align the cap with the rollers and you will then turn it clockwise to fully extend the rollers so that they're applying pressure to the pump tube. This is what the rollers look like when they're retracted versus how the rollers are supposed to look once they've been extended. The latch can now be removed from the top of the motor. Replace the cap on the bottom of the solution pump and secure both latches to secure the cap in place. 
Now that we've verified that the rollers on the pump are ready to go, we can prime the system. Before restoring water to the home, put the shutoff valve in the off position. Open the cold water valve to a tub or a shower. Then go ahead and restore the water to the home. To prime the pump, you will need to adjust the pump speed to 10 by rotating the dial as shown here. The shutoff valve can now be opened, allowing water to flow through the flow switch. Water will now begin to flow into your home. The flow switch will sense the water flow and will activate the pump. Allow the water to the tub and the pump to run for 10 minutes to fully prime it. After the time has elapsed, the water to the tub can be turned off. The dial on the pump will then need to be set to 5. The installation is now complete and your system is ready to use. We will now transition to discussing system troubleshooting. If the pump in your system is not running when water is flowing, begin by locating the on-off switch that's located on the top of the pump and ensure that it's in the on position. The pump is designed to only run when water is flowing. If instead it runs continuously, it could be a result of the power cord for the pump being plugged directly into an outlet. The plug for the pump should be plugged directly into the power box of the flow switch. This will ensure that the pump only runs when the flow switch senses water flow. If the pump is correctly plugged in, but it still runs continuously, or if it doesn't run at all, it's an indication that there might be an obstruction in the flow switch. You will need to access the flow switch mechanism to verify. This will require that you shut off the water to the system. You will also need to purge the pressure from your water lines by opening the cold faucet to a tub or shower and waiting for it to stop running. To gain access inside of the flow switch, locate the plastic tab that's sticking out from the side of the flow switch. Pull out the tab, but do not discard it. The actual flow switch can be pulled out from the flow switch housing. Inspect the mechanism and look for any debris. Sediment can build up on the top or the bottom of the flow switch that will prevent it from working. Once the flow switch has been cleared, you can reinsert it into the flow switch housing and push it in place. The plastic tab that locks the flow switch into the housing will now need to be pushed back in. Water can now be restored to the system and the switch should function normally. Thanks for watching this installation video.